This podcast is a proud member of the Lamb Podcasting Network. Find the network at largeassmovieblogs.com. Hello and welcome to episode 49 of the 1001 Movies podcast, based on the book, A Thousand and One Movies You Must See Before You Die. This week we'll be talking about The Unknown, the 1927 silent drama directed by Todd Browning. The mention of the name Bon Chaney may bring to mind images from the classic universal monster film The Wolfman, but those unfamiliar with classic American cinema may not realize that's Lon Chaney Jr., son of, of course, the legendary actor Lon Chaney, known by many as the Man of a Thousand Faces. The movies of yesteryear are often overlooked and taken for granted, but a closer look at Chaney's life and career could inspire admiration. We'll discuss Chaney more in a minute, but some say that the apex of his career was when he began working with director Todd Browning, whose own life is something of a bizarre story. At the age of 16 in 1896, Browning joined the circus as a barker for The Wild Man of Borneo and toured a season as a clown with Ringling Brothers before becoming a vaudeville actor. His experience with the circus would come to be the inspiration for many of his future films. By 1913, he was an actor in Hollywood, working for D.W. Griffith in many of his earlier comedies, and a couple years later, he directed his first short, The Lucky Transfer. In 1918, he met Lon Chaney, and the two of them made their first picture together, a crime drama called The Wicked Darling. Although it would be a few years until they worked together again, it was the beginning of a lucrative professional relationship for both of them. Browning's career began to waver when his problems with alcohol got worse, and eventually studios didn't want to give him any more pictures to make. In 1924, he went crawling to MGM and pleaded with Irving Thalberg to let him make a film he had written called The Unholy Three, about three circus freaks who conspired to commit robberies. Browning recruited Lon Chaney for the role of Echo the Ventriloquist, and it became the first in a chain of ten films that the two would make together, including The Unknown. Chaney's talent before the camera stemmed primarily from what some called his deaf face. His parents were both deaf-mutes, and his uncanny ability to emote in silent films likely stemmed from his communication with his family. He earned the moniker of A Man of a Thousand Faces from playing roles such as in elderly Chinese man in 1922's Shadows, and the title characters in The Hunchback of Notre Dame and The Phantom of the Opera. Although his roles were diverse, it was for the latter two that he was best known, and he earned a reputation as an icon in early American horror cinema, scaring children out of their wits at Saturday matinees across the country. Cheney had already established himself as a solid actor when he and Todd Browning began working on The Unholy Three, and it's likely that Cheney's presence in Browning's films revitalized Browning's career. The Unknown is Browning and Cheney's fourth film together. With a runtime of less than an hour, the plot of this silent drama is surprisingly complex and is yet another story inspired by Browning's early days with the circus. And yes, spoilers follow. It's the story of Alonzo, played by Cheney, an armless circus performer who falls for the ringmaster's daughter, Ninon, played by Joan Crawford in her breakthrough role. Ninon claims to despise men, particularly since they're always putting their hands on her. Alonzo's secret, known only by his sidekick Kojo, is that he isn't armless at all and is actually on the lam and in hiding. Things get worse when Alonzo strangles Ninon's father, which is seen by Nanon, although she doesn't recognize Alonzo and knows only that her father's murderer has a double thumb. Alonzo, knowing that he will never be able to reveal his secret to Nanon and eventually marry her, has his arm surgically amputated. After recovering, he returns to find that Nanon has fallen in love with the circus strongman, Malabar. Filled with jealousy, he conspires to kill Malabar during his act while holding the chains of two horses who are running in opposite directions. 
Alonzo's plot fails, however, and he's killed fending one of the horses off of Ninon. The film closes with Malabar and Ninon professing their love for each other and living happily ever after. The Unknown is pretty much as morbid as silent pictures can get without actually crossing the line into horror film territory. Browning's original script included a great deal more morbidity, including a scene in which Alonzo and Kojo rob a bank, and Alonzo subsequently poisons Kojo to keep him quiet. Alonzo also kills the doctor who performs the amputation. Browning originally wanted to close the film with Alonzo's death, but the studio insisted on a happier ending, and a short romantic scene between Nanon and Malabar was tagged on at the end. The film was marketed with the lie that Shaney performs the role using his feet to do things like smoke cigarettes and play the guitar, but in fact, an actually armless stunt double was used. This is pretty obvious in some scenes, while in others, such as a long shot in which Alonzo sits in a chair and lights a cigarette with a match, it comes across as something of a magic trick. You can't tell where Chenny's body ends and the stunt double's legs begin. Although the unknown jump-started Browning's career and sent Joan Crawford on to stardom, not every critic fully appreciated it. Harrison's Pictures praised the film's performances and artistic merit, but called it a, quote, gruesome and unpleasant picture. This was the opinion of many critics, and Photoplay wrote, We think you will like it as an unadulterated shocker. Like other Cheney pictures directed by Todd Browning, this has a macabre atmosphere. If you wince at a touch or two of horror, don't go to the unknown. If you like strong celluloid food, try it. It has the merit in possessing a finely sinister plot, some moments of real shock, and Lon Chaney. Although they tended to focus on the morbid plot, most critics did indeed find something to admire in the film, and audiences simply ate it up. Browning and Chaney would go on to make seven more movies together, and The Unknown is probably their most popular. Chaney's career did not last long after this, and his last film would be three years later, a talky remake of The Unholy Three reprising his role as Echo. Browning's most famous films, Dracula and Freaks, were on the horizon, and these are both subjects of future episodes. What did I think of The Unknown? Now, obviously, I'm a film buff, and I enjoy all kinds of movies, but I admit having a tiny bit of apprehension when sitting down to watch a silent film. This may be because I rewatched The Birth of a Nation about five times, because almost every time I found myself falling asleep. But The Unknown is a gem of a surprise, primarily because of Lon Chaney's acting. If this film was released at a time that they were awarding Oscars, he would be an obvious nominee. In the scene in which Nanan tells Alonzo after he returns from his surgery that she plans to marry Malabar, Cheney performs a gamut of emotions within just a couple minutes, from mistaken joy as he misunderstands Nanan's intentions to sheer malice as he realizes she's betrothed to another man. The fact that this is a silent film and all these feelings are emoted solely via Cheney's facial expressions make this all the more impressive. The story itself is solid as well, incorporating Browning's obsession with the circus and circus performers. Browning enjoyed writing stories in which facts were initially withheld from the audience, only to be revealed later, much to their surprise. The reveal that Alonzo does, in fact, have arms is quite a surprise, and it's the first in a number of plot developments that keep raising the stakes in this film, from the murder of the ringmaster to Alonzo's decision to amputate his arms. The decision to leave out elements like the murder of Kojo and the Doctor were made to keep the film less grisly, but I think they may have bogged down the story unnecessarily. With a total of three murders, it would seem to drive home the point of Alonzo's villainy a little too heavily. Here and there, you can see touches of Browning experimenting with the camera. In the scenes between Nanon and Malabar, cause was put over the camera lens, presumably to emphasize the romantic mood. While some filmmakers of the time were afraid of deviating from simple static shots, you can see Browning taking risks, deliberately cutting his scenes unconventionally. The Unknown actually marks the end of an era in Hollywood. Talking pictures were on the way in, and silent films were on the way out, and filmmakers would sacrifice much of their talent for the sake of the spoken word. 
You can see this in Browning's Dracula, made just four years later, which has all the directorial inspiration of someone filming a school play. Overall, The Unknown is a solid piece of work, and I look forward to seeing Lon Chaney in other films. That's all I have to say about The Unknown. Tune in next week when we discuss 1938's Jezebel, directed by William Wyler and starring Buddy Davis. In the meantime, feel free to email me any questions or comments at 1001moviespodcast at gmail.com. Follow me on Twitter at 1001moviespc and look for the podcast Facebook page. Until next time, happy viewing. Happy viewing.